Hello everyone, my name is Burning Wiki and welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about tanks because if there's one thing I love about Hell Let Loose, it is the tanks. I did a video about tanks in Hell Let Loose months and months ago and I feel like it needs an update. Now that I'm a level 10 tank commander and I want to share my tank experience with you all. So let's start with general tips and advice. Always have three men in a tank. You should never single tank. Switching seats takes way too long and you will die quickly. And it is considered a waste of resources. Unless you are the only person playing as a tanker, you should never single tank. If you have a repair torch, then lay down before you enter the tank. When the need arrives to repair the tank and you exit it to repair it, you will be already laying down right next to it and you are already in cover. This is such a good tip, guys. It can backfire when you need to kill somebody because then you're on the ground. But uh, laying down and entering the tank is a really nice tip tip it saved my life so many times if any of the three tank crew members should get out of the tank to repair it it is the driver the gunner keeps an eye on the front of the tank the tank commander looks around before the driver exits the tank and then keeps an eye on the rear of the tank to make sure the driver can repair the tank safely you should always avoid leaving your tank. It is better to drive away to a relatively safe spot. Uh, for example, surrounded by friendly infantry and then repair your tank. If you are the tank commander, take charge of the tank. Make sure everyone has a mic and you can understand them. Communication between the tank crew members is crucial. Do not let the driver or the gunner do their own thing. You are the tank commander. Start by looking at the map and copy all the friendly squad leader map markers. Use any other markers if you run out of the ones you want to use. The driver and the gunner can only see your markers and those of the commander. So this is very important combat intelligence to share. Whilst copying the map markers that the other squad leaders have placed on the map, look for enemy tank markers and plan your route towards that target, unless otherwise ordered by the commander. Place a move marker so your driver knows what direction he should be going. After that, keep your head on a swivel and once in a while press the T button so you see markers your fellow squad leaders have placed on the map. And keep looking around your tank in 360 degrees. You are the eyes of the tank. Listen to the command chat. You are the ears of the tank. Ask your fellow squad leaders to mark enemy tanks and request they update old markers. This is very important. These markers are never very accurate, but they will give you a good indication. Plus minus knowing where the enemy tanks are without them knowing that you even exist is a great tactical advantage. The reverse is true as well. Remember, whilst you are marking enemy tanks, your tank is getting spotted and marked by the enemy team as well. Besides a enemy tank surprising you, enemy artillery or anti-tank crews will also try to hunt you down. So don't stay too long in one position. You are the brains of the tank. Work together with other tanks in a team and ask the commander to give you infantry support. This way you can advance with the tank as cover for the infantry and at the same time they can provide you with protection against enemy anti-tank crews. Or take the initiative and position your tank in such a way you can assist other tanks and infantry either by attacking or defending. Keep a cool head. Do not panic under any circumstance. 
both the driver and the gunner have a very limited vision. If you lose your head and panic, death can come very quickly. When engaging an enemy tank, place your tank in such a position that you can support the infantry and they can support your tank. Talk to the command chat and talk to the squad leaders around your tank. Ping the target you want to shoot at by clicking the center scroll mouse button so the, both the gunner and the driver know what direction the enemy is at. Make sure you are facing any threat when possible head on. Your tank's frontal armor is the strongest of any side of your tank. If not stationary, use the tank to aim the cannon, not the turret. The tank turret moves slower than the tank itself can turn. Unless your gunner is already close to getting on target, aim with the tank, not the turret. It will require experience to master this skill for all three crew members, but once you gain this skill, it is really a big advantage. If you spot a target, use the clock method to put your gunner on a target. Do not use the grease. That will make all crew members, including yourself, look down at the bottom of your screen and look at the compass. And that costs valuable time. The degrees are written so small, you almost have to smash your face into the screen. And that will cost valuable seconds to look at. Now, what is the clock method? It is very simple and fast, and that is why I use it. If you always keep your head cool and always know where the front of your tank is whilst looking around, then the front of your tank is 12 o'clock, the right is 3 o'clock, the rear is 6 o'clock, and the left is 9 o'clock. Because your driver and gunner are always facing forward if you follow these steps, you can now say, for example, enemy tank left 3 o'clock or enemy infantry right 2 o'clock. Now, without explaining this method to any crew member, instinctively they know exactly what you mean. You ping the target and the gunner is already moving his cannon around. Keep pinging the target you want to shoot at by clicking the center scroll mouse button and look behind your tank once in a while whilst the gunner is engaging a target. There have been many times an enemy with a shuttle charge tried to sneak up on my tank. The best spot to aim from the front is the turret ring or, but less reliable, is the left or right on the turret on the vision ports. As far as I can tell, the sides are weak between the tracks and the turret, and the rear is one big weak spot. But sometimes a shell will bounce if the angle is weird. A heavy tank versus a heavy tank is two shots kill in the best possible scenario. A heavy tank versus a light tank is a one shot kill. The American light tank Stuart can kill a heavy tank in the rear with three shots. A German light tank Deluxe is only good against infantry. It has a quick fire automatic cannon with anti-personnel high explosive shells that can rip a whole squad to pieces in seconds. And the Americans have two heavy tanks. One has a 75mm cannon and the other has the 76mm cannon. You will need to know which enemy tank you are fighting and that will come with experience. Avoid going into cities or build up areas or bottlenecks in the landscape. A tank is a weapon designed for wide open terrain and long range engagements. In a city it is hard to maneuver. There is a high probability you will get stuck and the enemy can get behind your tank more easy. Also landmines will be more of a danger when you enter a city. A bottleneck in the landscape like a bridge can be crossed, but if given a chance it is way better to be the ambusher than the one being ambushed. 
Gunner tip. The tank turret rotates faster zoomed out than when you zoom in. When you are all the way zoomed, the cannon will adjust for precision, making the turret move slower. So when you have to aim the turret, always zoom all the way out until you have the enemy in your sight and then zoom in for precision aim. This will save a lot of time. Driver tip. If you lose engine power, say in the third or fourth gear, always shift back to the first gear and shift back up. Else the tank will become undrivable. When going around corners or turning the tank, always stay in the fourth gear. Even if you lose a little bit of power, if you shift back to a lower gear, you will lose engine power. The transmission and the gears do not function like real life. If you get stuck with your tank, then have the gunner fire the gun in the opposite direction you want to go. The blast of the cannon will wiggle the tank and it might just be enough to get your tank unstuck. Angling your armor to increase its effectiveness. Now, I want to address this hot debate and that is angling your tank so its armor protection increases. Does angling your tank help? And my honest answer would be yes, it does, but it is unpredictable and you cannot re really do it in game. So let me explain. I have been playing as a tank commander for a long time and sometimes when my gunner shoots at a tank that is at a weird angle or slope, the shell will bounce. But in my opinion, that is just a random thing. Furthermore, angling your tank to improve your armor thickness is unpractical. 75% of the enemy tanks I encounter, our tank was standing still and our gunner was already on target or trying to aim at an enemy tank. No commander in his right mind would say, gunner, stop aiming, driver, we need to go left. Uh, 20 degrees uh, to angle our tank. The same goes for when you are on the move, you spot a enemy tank, first priority is to get the gunner on the target, not angling the tank. In my experience, if two equal tanks meet, the one who gets the shell on target first wins the encounter. Of course there are random factors, but 99% of the time, if you spot the enemy and you manage to get your gunner on target first, you will win that encounter. Remember, Hell Let Loose is not a realistic shooter. A Tiger I tank or a Panther could one-shot any Russian or American tank in World War II. And the Panther tank is not equal to a T-34 or a Sherman. All three may be classed as medium tanks, but the Germans had a totally different idea about what a medium tank was. A T-34 weighs about 26 tons, a Sherman weighs about 31 tons, but a Panther weighs about 44 tons. Any other nation would classify the Panther as a heavy tank and not a medium. And the Tiger I tank is a super heavy tank with 54 long tons. The Russian IS tank did not arrive on the battlefield before 1944 and it was only the IS-2 with the 120mm cannon that was effective against the Tigers. Before that the German tanks had no equal. It was quantity that destroyed them, not quality. All this is not represented in the game because of game balancing. If you make it too realistic, then the balance would be off and you will need 10, 15 Shermans or T-34s fighting one Tiger tank, which would not work in Hell Let Loose. And that was about it. I think I'm pretty sure I forgot a few things. So 
please write them down in the comment section. And if you like this video or found it useful, then please give it a like. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, subscribe if you have not already. Join our great little Discord and follow me on Twitter. All the links are in the description. My name is Burning Wiki and I will see you all next time.